What's going on, Stuart? What's happening? So we'll see if we get any more people in here. I think there's only 20 something people signed up, but anyway, uh, Shannon Thomas trucking, what's going on? So we're gonna go over, I'm just gonna go over uh, a stock strategy. Of course, this is for entertainment purposes only, right? Always seek your investment professional, um, that sort of thing. And you'll see the disclosures or disclaimers in the intro. Um, and I got to redo the description down below so that has that in there too. But we're going to teach one strategy I use. Um, I was talking to the dean about it yesterday because even today, him and Cascade, uh, we were going over different things and we, they want to know what I did in the stock market today. So I kind of filled them in and let them know. And did some trades today, of course. Um, but... Here's a simple one if you want to uh, grow a portfolio and not have uh, a lot of the risk involved, right? All stock trading is risk, but it's called a rolling stock strategy. I don't know if you know what it is or how it works, but you want to find a stock that kind of rolls really nice and gentle, and that's all it does all the time. And... We'll show you a chart of a stock that does that. Here we go. So this is Sirius uh, Satellite Radio. Everybody uses them in their trucks, right? Most people do. Most people use them in their cars, uh, that kind of thing. And this stock, let me see if I can get myself out of the picture there. Bam, put it up top. This is what you want to call a rolling stock. As you can see, it kind of just rolls nice and neat. So we'll, we'll demonstrate that for you. It kind of like just goes up and down like this, right? It comes down, up, down, up, down, up. Just got a nice roll to it, right? Nice gradual roll across the top and bottom. Now, the way to do this is you'd take a piece of paper and you, let's say this is your piece of paper, that line, and you have a piece of paper at the bottom on a chart and start moving those towards each other. And then where they cross, let's say the $6.40 mark right there and the $6 mark, this is your trading range right there in a rolling stock. Now, you say, Jeff, what's that mean? Well, this is what it means. If I'm trading Sirius Sailor Radio, which I do, I do trade this stock. I own it right now because it's not at 640. You draw your line on 640. Now, up here, you can see that we have it as a one year chart. Let me change the color. We'll make, we'll make the buys, uh, we'll make the buys red. Right, we'll make the buys red. So at six dollars, this is where we're going to buy it. The six dollar mark right there. So this would be a buy. This is a buy. This is a buy down here. That's a buy, and we're not gonna we're not gonna buy until it sells, right? So those would be our buy points, and then we'll put the sell points in green. So. As the stock comes down here, you're gonna buy it. When it comes up, this is where we sell it, right here at the $6.40 mark. Okay? And you're gonna do it again down here. And then of course, this is a sell up here. Then it comes down, well it goes up, but you're not gonna buy it again until this point right here. So it's gonna go up and down, so you're gonna buy it right here. You're gonna sell it there. You're going to buy it here, sell it there, buy it here, goes up, sell it there. So in a course of a year, what's this mean? Well, it means this. Right here is one transaction. This is two. 
We bought and sold it twice, bought and sold it three times, bought and sold it four times, bought and sold it five times. So that's five times a year, right? When you look at the chart, are you only looking at a year history for Rolex? No, I'm going to show you a two-year chart on the same one, Stuart. We're going to go to the two-year charts on the, the other tab. And I'll bring that up and we'll look at the year before, right? Um, because if I scroll this up, you would see the bottom. I should have scrolled it up. But if I do that, to get to the scroll, it's going to take our things off. But we'll take them off and we will scroll it. So we can make this as big as we want. We'll scroll it. Here's your time frame right down here on the bottom. So let me get my tool back out. So here's your time frame right here. These are your dates. That's for the whole year. And here's our buys and sells. So we're working... If we buy it at six bucks, we sell at six forty. That's forty cents, right? So we got forty cent profit. And if we buy a thousand shares, and we'll do it with a hundred shares too, for people that don't have a whole lot of money. So if it was a hundred dollars on our buys, right? You have or a hundred shares, right? Hundred shares. At six dollars, so this is one hundred times six. So you have six hundred dollars invested. And then when you sell that stock, you got a forty cent gain because you're selling at six forty. So you're making forty dollars every time you sell it, right? So your this right here at a hundred shares turns into forty dollars. Now you're doing this five times through this year. You'd have done it five times. So times get out of there. Times five is $200 profit you just made on 600 that is roughly 30 so about 33% I don't have my calculator with me let me see what let me see what that would equate to in percentage wise for a gain and you're not going to get this at a bank right um, but this is a strategy and it works fairly well. Divide that. 33 and a third percent. So your your gain that year is 33 and a third percent. Now, if you have a little more money, right, 33 by 33, a little more money. So if you're trading with six thousand dollars, you're gonna buy a thousand shares of that stock. Well, then these numbers just go up. This would be four hundred right here if you're trading with a thousand shares of this stock then you would have four hundred dollars every time you do a trade and then that's times five because there's five trades so you got two thousand dollars you're dealing with six thousand right so you can see the more, of course, that you have, the more you're going to make on your money. But it shows you, you can still trade with fairly small amount. It's just going to take you longer to get there. But it's time, right? It's over time. Now, Stuart, you asked about a, uh, a second two-year. So here's the two-year chart right here. So we were January right in here. 2022 that was five times we traded correct Stuart so we're gonna slide this bar to 21 January 21 right right about in there okay to December which hits right December 21 come on work with me here All right, here comes December 21. So January is up here. Stock's at seven bucks. All right. So let's draw our lines on this. We're going to sweep that out. We're going to draw the line. So the bottom line is our $6 mark. And that line is right here.
And then our 640 mark is going to be right. Okay. Same same concept. That that's our range because we're looking back. So now we're back here. January of 21 is right in here. Is right in that point. And I probably could make this a little bigger to see. But this is January 21 right in here, this line. Okay? So let's change colors again. And our buys are going to be green down here. So when it crosses this line, that's one buy. And then we're going to do our sell up here. So we can go buy. If it doesn't cross the line, see it hits the line here, comes down. So we'll do a sell there, but it never reached here. But it comes down here, and then it goes up there, comes back down here, goes up there, comes back down here, book us around, goes there, and then we got this one here, and then we got that one there. So let's put our cells in here, a sell here, a sell there, a sell there. We're going to sell there, and we're going to sell there. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times on that on that year, right? Six times. So we know if you're trading with six hundred dollars, right? Back in twenty one January, February you start buying. Now we got six times. So if we're making. <coughs> $40 per trade on 100 shares, 40 cents, right? That's 40 bucks times your six, $240 profit on a $600 investment. That's 40%. So it's a 40% right here. So we knew on the other one, we had $200. So if someone was doing this and did not reinvest their money, you know, didn't buy more because they have more money now, and they just did the same $600 each time, then over the course of two years, their $600 goes to 240 plus a 200 plus 440 or $1,040. So now their portfolio is worth $1,040 in two years on this one stock doing this rolling stock rule. Now, if you times that by, you know, a thousand shares or you're betting six grand, you're investing six grand, um, then that changes, of course. Because now you're making on a $6,000 investment you're making $400 a trade, six trades, 2,400 plus the 2,000 that you had, 4,400. And over two year time, you go to $10,400 is now in that trading account. That's if you did not add to it, right? You did not add to it. That's if you didn't add to it. With this strategy, can you open up the buying window to buy lower or sell higher? Obviously a bit more risky, I would assume. Yeah, it is a little risky. Let's see, what are you saying here? When you look at the chart, oh, that's your year, year thing. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at. So you can bring any stock in here. We can put more stocks in the symbol and see if they're a good rolling stock. So you can just start looking at all kinds of stocks. And we don't care what they are. We, with this strategy, you don't care what they really are. As long as they have this pattern. That's all we're looking for. We're looking for this pattern to do this, right? So, but another strategy is you buy more stock, okay? 
So as we've seen this roll, let me get my thing in here. Let's go back to the one year chart, right? Let's go back to this one year chart. And let's go back to the same strategy, the rolling stock strategy. So we got our line here at six. We got our line here at 640. So this here is the sell line. And this line down here is your buy line, right? So these are your buy points. There's your buy points and then your sell points again will be sell here. Let's see your bot here. So you're going to sell up here, buy, sell when it crosses, comes back down, you sell, comes back down, you sell. So you got your five shots right there, right? You got one right there. So you got your one, two, three, four, five shots. Now, if you have, let's say you're $600 invested because you're only buying a hundred shares. And when you sell it at this point, you now have $640. So when it comes down to this buy point right here, right? When it comes down to here and you get ready to buy it again, you could buy more shares. Instead of buying a hundred, you have $640. So you could buy roughly another so you could buy like 106 shares now. And then when you go up here and sell it, you have, you have more money. Right? So you'd have 106 uh, times uh, 640. So $678. And of course... You got to add in the extra four because you had uh, 640. So you have $682 up here now, 682 up in this area. So you'd have 682 bucks right here. So when you come back down here and buy it again, now you got $682 to spend. So now you can buy 114 shares down here. You see how you can increase your money a lot faster? And you're just using the money that, you know, you're just reinvesting that money, right? So we're, re we're reinvesting it. So now we buy 114 shares. And then we come up here and we sell the 114 at the $6.40 mark. Now you're sitting at 700, roughly $730. So just off the two trades, you're up the 130 or the three trades, you're up $130 instead of 120. So you're increasing, right? And then if you can times this by 10 if you're trading a thousand shares at a time. Right? So instead of being up $130, here you'd be up $1,300, so forth. But that's the rolling stock strategy. Uh, if you've never seen it or how to determine it, like I said, you take a piece of paper, you act like these lines right here is a piece of paper on both top and bottom. So if you get two pieces of paper and you look at the stock charts on the screen, right? You're on your screen and then you're going to move those pieces of paper in like this until you get the most points that touch this, that touch these lines. And those are your lines. Your buys are the bottom when it crosses, touches or crosses that point, and your sells are when they hit that point. And then that strategy, you just keep doing that. It, it looks just like this inside the box. Yes, you're not capitalizing on these big gains up here. And you're not, you know, you get these big drops down here. We're not caring about that. We're looking at consistency, right? It's all about consistency in this strategy. So you, want, you just want to be consistent. So you could put in another stock symbol and we could look for something else. So let's, um, 
let's think of a stock symbol. Let's look at AMD. Advanced Micro. Uh, we got ads. We don't want to add. <clears throat> Let's see what this does. Now here's AMD. This is a this is a bigger swinger stock here. Um, you're gonna have less points. This is a less point rolling stock, right? It's not it's not as great. That's a two year chart. Let's go one year. Here's our one year chart. So if you're taking your pieces of paper and sliding them down, you're not going to hit very many points on this stock. So this is not a good stock for this strategy because you're not going to hit hardly any points. So this is a no-go, right? Because if you're looking, you're going to come in here and you're going to come in here and you're going to have a buy here, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, and you got to wait till this thing comes all the way back up. So it's not going in here as much. It's not a good flow. It's too choppy going down like this on the slant. You don't want that. We want stocks that will go, you know, in an, in an angle where they're going up and down like here and down here, but there's a lot of room in here. To play you know to play with in that chart so that's not a good chart so amd is out so now let's look at some other chart so let's just type in uh amazon's a big mover too right Th those are big move stocks so let's type apple in here let's see what apple's doing Okay, here's Apple. Let's see what they got shaking. All right, so Apple, you know, you come in at the hunt. It looks like their 140 line in this area is about where it's going to be. And um, the 150 line to capitalize on a $10 swing on Apple. Uh, you could do that. And it looks like you could hit that a few times. So if we draw a 140 line here, and we draw a 150 line here, if you bought here, sold there, you got one, you buy, sell, two, you buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six times in that range right in this range here over the last six months you can see they're starting to settle down right here into a nice a nice groove um, so this is a good range right here the last three months they settled down as you can see they're, they're not doing these big swings like this anymore they're settling down inside of a channel so we'll watch this stock we'll watch apple into the next year and see if they'll follow this 140 to 160 up here this range but we'll play the 150 range but we would watch this area to see if they stay inside this nice tight this nice tight area right here that they're developing and we'll see what that does Somebody give me another stat. Do you trust this strategy of crypto or is crypto too risky right now? Um, good question. <laughs> good question. With everything going on with crypto, I don't know, man. The kinds of fireworks. I, I know it's it's hard to tell on crypto. It hasn't hasn't been around a long time, right? I mean, Bitcoin's been around a long time, but the actual all the cryptos where they actually been started been trading and all this frenzy's only been a few years. They haven't been around a long time. And then with FTX, you know what's going on there. 
if the government steps in on a lot of this stuff, it gets their claws in it even deeper. Crypto might be crashed. I mean, you know, you hear things about uh, was Binance in the news not too long ago. I mean, they're investigating all these crypto brokerages, right? Or wallets. Um, probably to see how they're, the integrity of them, probably. So this could work in crypto. Yes, I mean, it can work because they have a chart, right? You bring up a crypto chart and you look at it. I mean, if you look at Dogecoin, Dogecoin, it's, you know, it's following eight, right now, like 8.5 to, to 9.2 or somewhere in there, right? So let me see what Dogecoin's doing right now. It's at 87. 87. And I do have some of it. I'm down $22 on it. I was up earlier today, $30 or something, but... It's trading in a range, right? It's trading in a range. So if you, it can work. I mean, it's a better strategy for a crypto if you get that range and get it out. Like Bitcoin, Bitcoin's got a range now, but the only problem with crypto is they charge a lot of fees to buy and sell that stuff, right? There's a huge margin and what I mean by that is that let's say if you trade Bitcoin on Robinhood, for example, to, to show you, we'll show you the Robinhood here, right? So if I'm looking at Dogecoin here and it's 87442 right now and I hit the buy button, I have to buy it at 87796. That's 520 on the scale of up or down, right? So as soon as I buy that, I'm in the hole. In the hole. Depending on how many, you know, coins you buy, depends how far you're in the hole you're going to be when you first do that trade. Because they got that, their commission's built in there. Right? It's built in there. So, you know, I used to, I used to what you trade Doge a couple times in an hour on the trucking channel. You make it look easy. Yeah, well, you know, I trade them like that, but I do, I do options. I do a lot of options plays. Um, when I trade all day long, mainly in the morning is options. And I'll go over that, you know, I'll, I'll be doing live trades right here on, on this channel. That's what we set it up for. Um, starting here pretty soon when the market opens I'll have my screen up you'll be able to see live trades and I'm gonna tell everybody hey if you want to join in the best thing to do is get a paper trade account right so if you sign into like Ameritrade or E-Trade or one of these brokerages um, a lot of them will have paper trading so I always suggest to people look if you're new to trading use a paper account so you can do all the trades you want, check strategies out, see if you can make money with it instead of losing your money. But then, you know, people say, well, man, I made all this money. I could have that with my own money. Yeah, but you could also lost a lot of money. And then this way, you didn't lose the money. It's a good trading technique uh, or training, right? It's a good training technique on trading is do a simulated paper trading account before you start trading real money. Does that make sense? Because they give you that tool, right? They give you that tool. Right? And yeah, with crypto, if it drops too quickly and stuff, yeah, the fees can kill you. So, you know, I bought 20,000 uh, Dogecoin today and now I'm down 23 bucks. I was up, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks, but I know if I sold it, I wasn't gonna make nothing. I wait till I'm up at least uh, 150, 200 bucks or so, and then I'll sell it and then just do it all over again. Um, now Bitcoin, now look at Bitcoin. So here's Bitcoin, it's at 17,713, and if I buy it, they wanna charge 17,716, so 
is $63. $63 difference. Right? So when I buy it, they're going to charge me that $17.76 price when it's only $17.36. So if I bought one Bitcoin, I'm $40 in a hole just like that. Right? $40 in a hole. Um, and the same thing with stock, but it's not that large. Most stocks are, are a penny. Right? So if the stock is $75.38, most of the time, the ask will be 75.38 and the bid will be 75.37. So there's a one cent difference, right? So if you buy a thousand shares, you know, if you buy a hundred shares, you're a dollar in a hole, right? If you buy a thousand, you're 10 bucks. It's not like this crypto stuff. I mean, crying out loud, Dogecoin's like a 500 and something you know, move is what they're charging you for that. It's crazy. Um, yeah, Peace can catch you. And then he says, uh, because of fireworks, M. Fry says, you were trying to teach Snorlord. You reached your $145 profit for the day. Right, so I set up goals. Um, when I first started, you know, I wanted to make $50 a day. People say, well, that's not that much money. Oh, yeah, it is. $50 a day, five days a week, it's 250 bucks times 52 weeks. You're around $2,700 for the year, right? But my goal now is 100 minimum, one to 500, right? If I land anywhere in there, I can stop for the day. That's my goal. So, like I had Samsara. Bought Samsara. It was up $300 uh, the other day. I sold it. Then I also had uh, AMC. I sold that. I also had a couple other ones that I did some options I did. I sold those. So, that was towards the top part of, you know, what I want for a daily. So that's what I try to do. If I can hit in that range, I stop and I come back the next day. Because I learned for doing this all these years, since the 90s, that if you get greedy and keep on going, they're going to they're get your money. So don't be greedy. Um, Wade Cook. And I read this book back in the 90s. Wade Cook, Trading by the Bible. That's the name of his book. Trading by the Bible. So you can go out, you can find this book. Buy it and read it. Because it's really, really informational. And he does biblical passages in there. And puts it to the trading. And if you follow that, it's, it's really, really useful. Um, because he, he talks about being greedy, right? So when, you know, back in them days when they got greedy and kept planting their fields, well, their, their fields didn't yield anything, right? They stopped yielding. The crop stopped growing. Well, same thing. You get greedy in the stock market, you're going to end up broke because they're going to take your money. Because here's what happens. If you get greedy, um, let me find a chart here. Let's look at the, um, let's look at the S&P, right? That's not the one I want. Let me see which one. SP 500 to 500 bear. 
the bond. Let me see what this one is. See what this one's doing. All right, let's try. Let's try this one. Okay, get my cursor down here. Let's zoom in on this stock right here, or this chart. All right, so if we got, if we got greedy, right? And we bought the stock down here and it's going up, right? And we sold it. Let's say this was our line right here. And we sold it right there and it kept going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. You say, man, this thing's going to soar. It's soaring. I buy right here. I get greedy. I buy. And then it just goes like this. Straight on down. Right? And that's where a lot of people, and when it does this, see, here's human nature is this. Human nature is this. When this is going down and you're losing your money, let's say this is, uh, you had $10,000 invested up here and it's coming down. Now it's worth 5,000. It's coming down. Now it's worth 4,000. And it keeps coming down. A lot of people don't have the stomach for this, right? So what they do is they sell right here. And, they, and now they took a $6,000 loss because they don't have the, the mindset to say, hey, it's going to come back. I just got to, I just got to remember it. It's, you know, it's going to come back or come back up. I don't want to take the loss, but most people take the loss. You guys agree? Most people will say, I'm not losing no more money. I'm, I'm keeping what I got. Right? And it comes down. And then it bounces all the way back up. And then they're sitting there going. Their mind plays a game with them again because they're watching this. They won't turn it off. They watch it. And they say, oh, my four now would be worth seven. Man. I'd only be down three grand now. Now what I what I do is this. I cost average. You never play with all, all your money, right? On the table. Never. Small percentage. Small percentage. And what, what does that do for you? Well, this is what it does for you. In this scenario, here's what I do. It comes down to this point right there. Right? Comes down to this point right there. And if you had 500 shares, let's say is what you had, I get down to this point, I buy 500 more. And what's that do? Well, if this point down here is 370 and you bought it, let's say up here at 430, now for me to break even, I only got to go up half the distance because now I got a thousand shares. So I, I paid 370 and 430. So there's a 60 difference here, which is only a 30 point move. So at 400, right at the 400 mark, that's my break even point now, right there. So at 400, I break even. So as the stock goes up, boom, I break even. Now, the person that sold it lost their money. But if they didn't sell it and it goes down and they keep on, they keep on holding it, they're still down half their money here. 
at this point where I break even already. And as it goes up, I'm making money and they're still trying to get their money back, right? And they got to go all the way up here to get their money back. So that's what I do. I cost average down. You don't play with you know super risky stocks when you're doing this, right? You don't cost average down on those stocks. We're talking, you know, like Ford Motor Company, Intel, um, you know, Samsara, you know, stocks that have value and are solid businesses. Um, you don't do it on the Mimi stocks, so they call them, you know, like the Dogecoin things like that, right? Uh, you don't do it on those types of stocks. AMC is, they consider it a Mimi stock, although they're the biggest uh, theater chain out there, right? So that's just a strategy. So that's uh, that's about all we're going to do for today, I think. Um, we're going to touch on uh, next one. Maybe I'll go live during a trading day and show us, you know, show what's going on. Um, if anybody wants to learn about Forex and what Forex is and, and the concept behind it, um, the terminology of it, you know, do you know what a pip is? Do you know what you know, what each pip represents on a movement of money. Um, it's because you need to know every time one pip cranks out there how much money you're either making or losing um, at that point. If anybody wants to learn about Forex trading, I can I can do a segment on that also and uh, start out with the terminology. And then we could go over strategies on that and look at charts and things like that. You can do a lot more things here with these charts. Um, you know, here's the the volumes down here at the bottom. This here's the volume. You can see they got really nice volume here. But we'll go over all that in another video. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see y'all later. Everybody have a good night. And uh, if you want to, you know, be part of the of the trading group live, I think I'll, you know, do, during the live thing, we'll have the, I'll post it up there. We could be on the live online together, right? Um, on the website, I'm going to, it's up and running. There's a store part of it. I don't know if I'm going to sell anything on there or not. Probably not. I don't know. Um, I could do a bunch of strategies and do videos and put them on there. I have a test thing. Don't click on it. It says a dollar. Don't click on it. It's just the intro. I just want to make sure that video download thing works. Um, or we could do, you know, small memberships and things like that. Cause I'm going to show... I use a lot of tools that cost a lot of lot of lot of money, um, and I'm going to show those tools. Right, we're going to use those tools live while we're trading, and uh, so if people wanted to, you know, help out. They have the group and they want to help out in that aspect. Maybe I'll have like a membership button or something, uh, you know, and it'll help absorb some of those tools, but. Uh, because everybody will be able to see them, right? When we're when we're when we're doing this anyway. But that's just an idea. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I don't even know how many people's left in here because I'm using this other platform. Which uh, it you know you can't go live on YouTube. I, I got I'm using my software to go live because we only have 27 subscribers on this channel. So. We have to go live a different way, right? All right. So thanks for watching. Stuart, Cons of Fireworks, uh, Shannon Thomas says we have five people on my screen. I don't know exactly what you guys are showing. But hit the thumbs up on the way out. And... Uh, Right, the more brain power, the better. So one of the one of the things, Stuart, I use, it's a yearly, it's a monthly fee, but I pay by the year. It's a group, and I have 
their site up, they have chat rooms, right? They got chat rooms and you can listen to them talking, right? And you can participate, talk if you want, but I just listen. So what I'll do is I'll wear this headset and I'll be listening and I'll be doing my own thing on options and stuff during the day. But when they say something, hey, you might want to look at this, right? They'll, they'll give their strategy, they'll show the chart and all this stuff. I'll look over and see what they're talking about. Plus, I'm looking at the options flow meter. And I want to see sweeps. And then, you know, we'll go over blocks and sweeps and things like that. But I want to see sweeps of millions of dollars. And if I see a sweep come in of, let's say, 800000 to over a million dollars, that's that's a transaction by somebody. That's a lot of money. And if I, sw I see a sweep and if it's a put or call, I'm clicking on that stock and seeing exactly what position they're buying call you know buying a call or, or doing a put on and i'm gonna follow that same position but i'm not gonna hold it for that long right so if they're doing let's say a march put on apple at 140 bucks and they're doing millions of dollars at one transaction i'm gonna click on it see what apple's doing i'm gonna say well somebody knows something because they're not gonna risk that kind of money they're betting the stock will go down to let's say 140 and it's sitting at 146 or let's say they say 120 even. They know something, right? They know something. So I'll get in on it, right? I'll, I'll do the same trade, but if that stock starts going down over the course of time, I will get out at a certain point, right? I'm not gonna try to hit a home run. I'd rather hit a lot of singles and doubles That'll make you more runs than the home runs will. So, you know, I'll have an exit strategy. All right, so that's it. We will see you all later. Hope you enjoyed it. I don't know if did anybody learn anything. Uh, so you, everybody's got a good idea of what the uh, rolling. Stock rule is. All right, we'll see y'all later.